if I could only figure out how to get my team motivated. We are never going to get this project done on time. Oh my God, my payroll numbers are insane. Why are we having all this overtime? Do you have these or similar employee problems? Do you feel like some of your employees are just there for a paycheck? Tired of recruiting, interviewing, onboarding, and training just to find out you must do it all over again? Then it's time for you to find out how to have outrageously awesome employees. Sit back, buckle up, and get ready because we're about to drop a knowledge bomb on you. Please welcome to the mic the host of the show, the man who puts the human in human resources, the 007 of team building, the emperor of employee engagement, Randy Starr. Hello, guys, and welcome back to another episode of How to Have Outrageously Awesome Employees. Super guest today. He's the Senior Human Resources Manager for Kona Grill, and his name is Jeff Clark. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy, for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. Um, I went on to the website for Kona Grill just five or ten minutes ago before we started um, the show just to kind of get an idea and this is going to be a very quick interview because now I'm really hungry. I mean, the food just looks awesome and it's a great website too. It's phenomenal. Well, thank you. We've uh, been working on it for the last 12 months or so to, to make sure that it appeals to, to our audience and, and it sounds like it's having the right effect. Yeah, it is. It's tremendous. I mean, it's just, it, it says good food, good fun and community all at once. So if that's what you're going for. That's what I got. <laughs> okay. So, so that everyone can get to know you, if you would just tell us a little bit about your background positions you've held companies you work for and a little bit about what you do now at Kona Grill. Sure. I've been in and around human resources for about 25 years, uh, various roles throughout, throughout my time. Uh, with with various organizations, you know, I, it really started uh, with with Taco Bell, where I was in the training department, uh, opening new restaurants, training and development managers, etc. Uh, worked for a period of time at Hardee's uh, for a few years, uh, doing the same thing in training and development, uh, and at Taco John's International uh, in Wyoming for for a, a six year stint uh, in the training and development department. Um, from there, I went into a, a more formal human resources role, uh, you know, spending that much time, you know, prior to that, uh, training people on how to, how to implement and, and work with employees and, and deal with employee issues and investigations and challenges that come with employees made it a natural progression for me to just roll into a human resources role. I was with a company called Admiral Beverage Corporation in Wyoming, uh, one of the largest distributors of Pepsi-Cola products in the United States. I was there for almost 11 years as, as the senior human resources manager. Wow. Um, and uh, joined here at Kona Grill uh, last January. Uh, had the opportunity to move from, from snowy Wyoming to warm Phoenix and uh, jumped on the opportunity and uh, kind, of, kind of got me back to my restaurant roots. Uh, what I do now uh, is I'm the senior HR manager. Uh, I oversee a staff of three. I have uh, two recruiters and an HR business partner. Uh, we uh, oversee and ad administer the HR function, recruiting function for 46 restaurants in 23 states. Uh, and we do have a restaurant in Puerto Rico. Um, and we have about 4,000 employees. Wow. That's, so that's a, kind of a quick history. That's a that's a great uh, great career, great background. When let me it has been. Let yeah. me let me dig back into it a little bit because you said something that kind of threw up a flag for me. You worked for Hardee's in training. I did. When was that? So I was there from. I actually worked for an, uh, a Hardee's franchisee called Heartland Foods. Heartland Foods. Um, and and uh, I was there from 1993 to 1996. So, see, the reason I asked is because I used to live in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. That's the home of, 
of Hardy's. So it was Hardy's corporate headquarters um, and yeah, Body I, Knoll, I, which is another uh, franchise of Hardy's restaurant. So did you ever come and yeah, visit us? I, I used to go down there quite a bit yeah. and, uh, into the Raleigh market. You know, we were an independent franchisee, and that, that's one of the, the things that I've, I've spent most of my career doing is, is dealing with franchise owners. Yeah. Um, and, and for that period of time, we were, we were actually a franchisee. So getting good insight on that, that kind of side of the table. Yeah. They were, um, they were a, uh, a driving force in that part of North Carolina for many, many years till I think it's yeah. Carl Jr.'s um, bought them out. So, so obviously you've come from training um, mm -hmm. training background. Uh, what is it about the human resources field that's been so interesting to you to, to stay in it and continue as you have? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll give you my answer and there's, there's some funny backstory to that. Um, uh, you know, part, part of being in human resources is you have to have a passion for people and helping people, um, either helping people be successful, helping, helping people grow in their careers, helping people get their problems solved and their issues resolved. Um, you really have to have a passion for that. If you're not a people person, you're probably, you know, HR has evolved a lot. You know, it used to be just a very task oriented and, and kind of paper pushing administrative function that, that organizations have. Um, now it's really evolved into more of a, of a, uh, almost a community service within the organization that, that helps, helps uh, drive the results of the organization, of course, using one of the most important resources we have, and that's our people. Um, and, and that's what really brought me back to, to being into HR is, uh, and made that transition from training a pretty natural one is, you know, you gotta like being around people to do that. Now, the funny part is, uh, I'm, I'm not very social. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I prefer nothing more than going home and playing with my kids and, and, uh, hanging out and watching, watching TV with my wife and, and just relaxing at home. But, um, uh, from, from a work standpoint, I, I like the interaction with people. I like uh, helping them resolve their issues. It's a, um, it's two, couple things you hit on but yeah the passion for people i think is uh, uh the underlying thread um you're in an industry that's obviously very labor intensive so you have plenty of people to be passionate with but i really like the community service thought process how it, but it has changed i mean hr used to be my mother was in human resources when it was called um, the personnel department, I think, or employee relations or something like that back then. And it's basically, I guess, keeping records of the employees, you know, but that was about yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're, um, become business partners. Um, so yeah, but I like the community service. That's awesome. That's a great way to, um, to describe it to somebody now, because that's where it's at. That's exactly where it's evolved yeah. into. So 25 years in human resources, a, a lot of it in training, what would you say, or could you tell us a story about what you would consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments so far in HR? Um, you know, that's a tough question. There, you know, there's every, everything can be looked at as a little accomplishment, right? So right. for me, probably the, the thing I'm, I'm most, proud of, of participating in was during my time at Admiral Beverage, uh, you know, we were having, we were in the trucking industry and, and manufacturing and sales and distribution, very, very difficult uh, in a state as, as uh, sparsely part populated as Wyoming is to find right. employees. Um, uh, you know, our, 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 com our company's passion and desire was certainly to, to help the community and, and strive to to keep jobs as much local as we could. Um, one of the ways we, we accomplished that was by uh, reaching out to our local Air Force bases 
And uh, because we were fortunate enough to be located in a lot of those communities and struck up a relationship with the Transition Assistance Program uh, folks at those, those bases and uh, was able to go in and, and present from an employer standpoint uh, how to go about transitioning from a military career to a civilian career. And uh, by, by doing that, you know, they would let us go in every month, essentially, and, and talk to them for an hour, an hour and a half about uh, here is how, here is what an employer is looking for you. Here's, here's how you can translate your military skills into civilian skills. And we were able to turn that into to kind of a recruiting opportunity for us as well. We hired several of those folks to, to come work for us, but it gave a lot of uh, a great um, sense of sense of pride that we were able to help those those folks uh, transition smoothly out of the, out of the service. That is um, that's tremendous. That's thinking out of the box for sure. It was, and, and uh, we were able to, to take that to a couple other military bases that we were located near, and uh, you know, it was just a model that we kind of rolled out, and we were all able to do that. It worked out pretty well. That's awesome. Yep, help, yeah. out, help out a vet, and at the same time, a great recruiting process, because you're getting talented folks that have been trained that uh, know how to do what they're doing, so what a, what a great... What sure. a, what a great out of the box thought process that was. Um, currently, tell us what you do to help your employees grow, whether that would be professionally, personally, or both. Uh, great, great question. You know, there, we, we, one of the things we try to do is we try to look at everything we do as a learning opportunity, right? And, and I think really stressing to the team, it's, it's okay to make a mistake. We're, we're, making, we're making strides, we're making progress. Um, I actually have, have a wooden elephant that one of my, my employees gave to me because we often talk about, um, this is a big elephant we're, t we're dealing with. And the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So um, we're always progressing, we're always uh, making changes. And, and you learn by doing that. You learn by falling and, and, uh, and getting back up and trying again. Um, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the ways that I, I think helps us grow is there's not a feel, fear of failure and you're not, it's not a career ender. It's, it's simply a learning opportunity. Um, I think the other thing that really helps the, the team grow is, is giving them stretch goals, giving them goals that are really challenging uh, what they know. You know, my HR business partner is a good example. She was a former HR manager at, a, at another organization, and uh, she didn't have a lot to do with benefits. She didn't have a lot to do with compensation. She didn't have a lot to do with recruiting and, and, uh, and kind of scouring for, for candidates. And, and by challenging her and getting her, um, getting her uh, some exposure to really high-end, high-level decisions, has really given her the opportunity to grow in her in her capacity, and, and now she's a great uh, benefit administrator person that you could really drop in any organization, and she'd be she'd be tremendous at it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's you know I think that's what it's about. And you said you could drop into any organization. Um, I think so many times people think of retaining and holding on to. Um, employees where in a lot of a lot of instances if you don't have room for them to grow within the organization you're doing yourself them and your organization and somebody else's organization a, a, a good positive thing by letting them go to another organization if you've trained them that well I mean if you don't have room to move them what are you going to do well Randy I think you know one of the one of the desires I think of every employer is to, to keep every employee they have on their team for, for 25 years, right? I, I'm, I'm 20 years, 25 years from retiring. So I want my three people to be with me forever. Right. That's simply just not realistic and no. it's probably not fair to even, to even think that's going to happen. I, I think what you have to do is you have to make sure that 
um, and, and especially with the generation we're dealing with, that they continue to get the challenges that that make them desire to want to be there and make them better at what they're currently doing, but also give them that flexibility. If they need to make a change, they're able to do that. I agree. Um, people from my parents generation and their parents generation uh, went to work for ABC company and worked there for their entire lives and retired. <clears throat> and I don't think that happens um, a whole lot anymore. I, I went to work for uh, Marriott International and had that thought process when I went to work for them. And about seven years into it, um, seven or eight years, about eight years into it, um, they changed that thought process for me. Um, yeah. Which, you know, hey, that I was, it, it crushed me. It really did because I was, I was the most engaged employee on the planet. Um, yeah. I, I loved where I worked. I loved who I worked for. I loved doing everything I did. It was ridiculous and it was just like devastating. But then after I got over that, um, I, it, it, it was like here, there, here, there. I went from franchisee partner back to Marriott, back to franchisee partner, back to Marriott. It was back and forth and many different franchisee partners. And, um, and now I've got kids and one of them is uh, of working age. She's 24 and she's like, uh, yeah, that, it's not going to happen for me. There's no way in the world I'd ever work someplace for that many years. <laughs> she doesn't want to. Yeah, yeah. You know? She wants the new experiences. So it's awesome. So um, tell us about a time when you helped an employee overcome a particular challenge. Yeah, that's a difficult one. You know, I, I, uh, there, there's lots of things that, that happen over over the span of a, of a career of 20 plus years that, yeah. that uh, you know, always, it always seems like there's a challenge. Every day there seems to be a challenge. I, I think any time that, that an employee comes to you and they identify they have a, a problem with alcohol, let's say, and, and I had that uh, last year, an employee came and, and, and had an issue with alcohol and, and was able to help them navigate, you know, here's, here's how you get some help and here's how you get, get support and, and, um, and, uh, and, and help them kind of navigate the waters. I, I think it builds, A, it's the right thing to do, right? As, as part of the community of employees that, that we want to have, it's the right. right thing to do. Yes. Um, it's the legal thing to do, of course. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it builds a, a great basis for a loyal employee long-term and, and, uh, uh, fortunately that employee was able to get help and, and we were able to support that employee's spouse during that time and, and provide them, uh, with, with an outlet for questions and answers and, and any support they needed during that time frame. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a lot of loyalty there uh, built from that. Oh, tremendous amount of loyalty. That's, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I mean, that's just got to yeah. be, it's, it's a, that's, it, it, it might be the right thing to do, but in a lot of people's eyes, it's above and beyond what would be expected from an employer. So, yeah, that's a yeah. great example. Um, you, so since you have the training background that you have, let's bring it into Kona Grill and restaurants. What do you feel is the most important type of training for your current employees? Well, that's a great question. You know, day, daily training has, has to be the case, right? You got to learn something every day. You got to pick up things every day. And, and our managers are good at, at pulling that off. It's easy in a restaurant atmosphere because, because things change every day, right? And a, new, a new situation comes up, a new guest complaint comes up, a new menu item comes out. Uh, there, there's always an opportunity to say, hey, here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we've done it in the past. Um, but, but we're going to change it up and, and do something a little bit differently. Um, so it's easy, it's easy in a restaurant. It's much more harder in an, in an administrative setting, right? Because... Right. You know, everything's kind of day to day. Everything's kind of, you know, you're going through the motions and you're doing what you what you normally or or have to do. Um, I, I think 
you know, you've got to have, you, you A, as a, as a manager and a leader, you have to, to recognize the, the strengths of your team and be able to um, identify where, where that uh, kind of gap in their skill set is so that you can help them, help them fill in that gap. Um, I, I have a, a great uh, talent acquisition manager who uh, is, is interested in, in looking at more of the compensation analysis and what should we be paying based on the markets. And, and through some daily questions and conversations, we're, we're able to fill that, that gap in, in that experience. And she's becoming a great compensation person uh, just by having those daily conversations, getting her hands on in the process and, and kind of stretching her goals a little bit and, and sending her out there to, to kind of fish out some of that information um, and really plugging into the why. Is the why is it, why is it this way? Why are we looking at this instead of this? Um, and answering a lot of those questions helps. The daily training is excellent um i think that's imperative i mean if you're not growing you're dying i mean if you're not progressing forward you're going backwards that's for sure especially in an environment like a restaurant that is um em employee or labor intensive number one number two it's extremely competitive in almost every market that you're in i would imagine not only for guests or customers, but it's probably also competitive for employees. So um, people love to learn, you know, they, they yeah. like to, and when you do, when you do that for them, they feel like they are part or are want to be a part of the organization. They feel like you want them to be a part of the organization. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, you've already kind of touched on this a little bit, Jeff, but um, <laughs> Tell us what your typical day is like. Oh boy, uh, define a typical day. I, <laughs> I, uh, you, you never know driving into work what the day's going to look like. You, know, you always have a good idea. You know, there's things on your calendar that that are going to take up some time and, and, and things you got to address. Right. Every day is different, and and if you're looking for, I would say anybody listening listening to this podcast is is interested in, in punching the clock and going home at the end of the day and you, you put your widgets together and you're, you're done. It's, it's never that way in HR. Um, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, you know, typically my day consists of talking to a lot of people, spend a lot of time on the phone, spend a lot of time with people in and out of my office, uh, answering lots of questions, a lot of benefit questions, a lot of, uh, administrative processes, questions. Um, and then there's also, you know, the, the daily ins and out things, right? The, the FMLA issues that, that arise, the, the lead management uh, stuff that comes up, the insurance claims that, that need addressed, the workers' comp information that needs addressed. Um, so it's, it's kind of a smorgasbord every day. It's, it's a little different. Um, a lot of it is is again tied to dealing with people. If you, uh, you know, you got to pick up the phone and call someone. You got to have people in your office and engage with them. Um, you, you have to also engage with people around you. That, that look, HR is nothing to fear. Um, you know, we, we've all worked in that environment, especially if you've been around for a long time. Twenty years ago, that was that was HR's uh, mo to, to some extent was to instill fear and. And now uh, that's what they did. They came in and chopped heads, and and uh, you know that was their role. And and anymore, you have to work harder to to ensure that that's not the case. So some of the time is you know kind of shaking hands and kissing babies and getting people used to used to having you around. I think the shaking hands and kissing babies is the reason why I've always loved HR people. <laughs> they, yeah. They're just they're just all phenomenal. I've never met one yeah. that was like. Uh, you know, a sourpuss. They they just sit behind their desk and do nothing. They're always, you know, the the grade school teacher who puts the built bulletin boards up with all the flowers and made out of craft paper and stuff. That and, and I, I actually did one of these interviews, and 
one of the HR professionals that I spoke with, her original thought process going to school, she was going to be a teacher because of stuff like that. Now she's an HR professional. And the, the creative things that come out of HR to um, help employees is just something nowadays it just blows your mind and i can go back 20 years when it was kind of like the principal's office if you will you know yeah. don't want to go there because it's not going to be good but now it's right. like not nothing like that at all of course you always have to have those conversations at times but yeah it's so sure. completely different sure. yeah um jeff i got one more question for you and this one's not for me. This is for somebody who may be listening that is either considering getting into human resources in any capacity or has just recently um, entered into a role in human resources. What would you say to them to help them become successful? Great question. I, I think first you have to keep your mind open to learn. You got you to uh, learn every day pick up something new every day, you know, every, everything changes all the time. The landscape is pretty, pretty dynamic. Uh, for a company like ours, where we are in uh, 23 states, uh, the equivalent to, to 35 markets, uh, we really have to keep our thumb on what all those markets are doing all the time. Um, so in order to do that, you have to do research, you gotta stay educated, um, I, I think that's a, a key component to to being um, to being strategic in the role of HR. Um, I, I think uh, focusing on results relating to the business is is important. Um, you know, it, it is about a business partnership. I, I have to know what the challenges in the business currently are to really to really help our CEO. COO, CEO, CFO operate on a daily basis um, and, and to be able to, to make sure that I'm doing what I can and what's within my, my span of control to help them manage some of those challenges. Um, and, and I think lastly, you know, really the dedication of people. You've got to really stay focused on the people side of the business. And, and to your point, Randy, yeah, you do have to have some difficult conversations. Um, I, I think, though, uh, being candid and honest and open and, and direct with people helps that approach when it's both uh, negative, a, a more negative conversation, as well as when it's a, a really positive conversation. Uh, to, to sincerely tell someone, hey, we appreciate the job you do. We appreciate your weekends and nights and holidays that you work. Um, they, they need to hear both of those things in order for them to really succeed. That's, I agree with that so much. Communication is um, so vital to employees. Um, and, and like you said, if you, nowadays, if the communication is good and you've called somebody in, they know why they're coming in. They know it's going to be either a attaboy or an uh-oh. So, yeah, if you're communicating well with your employees, they know they're in uh, performance issue problems. You know, they know they have problems there. If they're doing really well, they know that too. So there should be no surprises. I agree hundred percent. Listen, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. This was awesome. What a tremendous amount of information in what? 30 minutes. <laughs> That's great. 25 years of experience. Um, and you just dropped some really what I call golden nuggets on us of information, information bombs of knowledge. So thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Um, for those of you uh, that are listening for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can check Jeff out on LinkedIn. He's pretty active on LinkedIn and KonaGrill.com is the uh, website that we spoke of in the beginning. So uh, for now, I'm going to close this episode. You guys have an awesome day and bye for now. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please feel free to contact Randy with any questions about team building or employee engagement issues. Subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified when new episodes are published.